everyone, welcome to Off The Court with me, Caroline Barker, and her, Tamsin Greenway. On my computer, Tamsin, you're actually dancing on my head right now. Uh, I don't know how I was looking at that. It's how it should be, right? All yeah, levels wrong. All levels wrong. How have you been these past few days? Oh, good. Um, we've been doing PE lessons with Joe Wicks. We've been taking our daily walks. We are surviving, so it's all good. Uh, the PE lessons, have you actually been doing them? Because my thighs are dead. <laughs> Yeah, there was heavy leg emphasis the last couple of days. Um, yeah, they've been tough, these hip workouts. And I keep trying to push Jamie Jean along with me, the six-year-old who keeps telling me her legs are tired. I'm like, you're fine, push on through. I keep forgetting we're perhaps not at a Super League training session. Yeah, you should maybe do as I do, which is, oh, you want to stop? You want a break? Okay, that's fine. Four <laughs> chocolate biscuits later. I'm uh, seven <laughs> packs of chocolate biscuits deep. That is what's been happening to us. Lots of the players, as we'll find out a bit later on, are still doing all these. Um, how would you describe these videos that we've seen from the players in terms of their, their fitness regimes? Yeah, a lot of sort of high intensity, sort of hit workouts, a lot of um, keeping their strength work up. So a lot of s and um, SAQ work as well. So lots of footwork drills and movement patterns. Um, and yeah, lots of short, sharp netball stuff. And then of course, drill work on, on the wall and, and with a partner if they can. So there's a whole heap of variety out there, but it's all sort of similar stuff, short, sharp um, bits that people can be doing all over the country. We have got Tamsin's own drills coming up. We've got Rachel Dunn coming up. We will be back in touch with the netball show, My Netball Nation for their mid quarter of the season so far. But if you have missed anything, there is a handy guide now available on the Sky Sports Netball website. So what are the netballers up to during the coronavirus pandemic? There's loads on there. The Surrey Storm competition is down to the finals. Might be done by the time that you uh, watch this as well. Hannah Passmore getting five out of five with a blindfold on is a thing to look at. Nia Jones pops up a lot on this and there's talk from around the netball. Well, great to see Cecilia Mokowane, South Africa, Netball South Africa's president, doing much better after she tested positive for coronavirus. And if you are missing your netball fix at the moment, never fear, Sky Sports Netball is here to help you. Every Monday, we're reliving some of the Netball World Cup. Next Monday, 7 o'clock, you can tune in to New Zealand up against Australia. That one is being replayed again next Monday at 7. When I say replayed, the result still stands on the first one. It's just <laughs> watching the first game back again. How we'd love that one to be replayed. Also on the website at the moment, loads of different in-depth interviews, including one with Tracy Neville. You can read it or you can watch her. She's joining us next on Off The Court. Tracy, it is lovely to see you. We kind of thought you might have the, the baby in tow. This is, this is daddy's hour. I'm like, oh. this is free. I'm, I'm relishing the fact of being able to talk to other people at the moment. <laughs> now, it's, it's been obviously a, a couple of months for you that seen you have a baby and think you're going to kick back, watch the netball. And of course, it's, it's not happened. Are you feeling that, that distance from netball as much as everyone else at the moment? I think it's a real strange time for everyone. And obviously, you know, my brother-in-law thinks that I'm the only person in the world that could put everyone on maternity leave at the same time. He actually is joking with me at the moment. But I think um, at the time, nobody would have expected this epidemic. And I'm only fortunate that um, Nev was born at a time he was. Um, where I was able to have all my family and friends around me and the, the full support from the NHS at the time. And, but yeah, um, it is strange now. And I've, I've realised once I've had the baby that netball is something that I'm really missing from my life. So I can't wait to get back involved again. We've kept you busy as well. And I know you've been writing some stuff and talking to us on, on Sky. And one of those articles is about how we play the season out. And you're a big advocate that we've got to let it run to the end. Definitely. I think, first of all, we have to make sure that the health and well-being of the country is at the foremost of all this. But when you look at it from a strategic point of view, to not have netball now till that November, December test series would be absolutely a travesty for domestic netball in England. And, you know, you talk about um, the franchises being able to sustain the product, being able to sustain um, their players you know, have the money to go into the following season and, and the things that go around it, but also supporting the players, the staff, the fans, the media would, you know, it'd be absolutely devastating not to actually see this season out. And I think everything should be put in place, even from a day one start, Caroline, where, you know, there is going to be a day one, one day. We have to, you know, attack this real positively. And what does that day one look like? And 
and that can be that cannot be a season without um, netball, in particular a domestic season. This is a unique opportunity to be able to get together and come up with a league that conforms with each other. You know, we, we look at where Australia are now, they've postponed theirs in New Zealand. And, you know, we've got the quad, you've got the quad series happening in September, which at the moment doesn't look like it's going to run. So for the leagues now, these domestic leagues are saying that they are actually going to start at some point this year. And I think, you know, the workings together of international network to be able to coordinate them would really set the precedence in respect to leading into a really slick international season. And, and that means not missing out in, on any of the competitions that are actually being run this year. So you're saying we should, where possible, try and fit in a whole season if we can, or at least finish this season off. England should really take advantage of the fact when we see Australia and New Zealand playing the Constellation Cup, they should get a fixture in there too. Should we should try where possible to keep that momentum going and then carry it into next year and, and hopefully a, a new season beginning then. Aside from that, and back to, to the here and now, we've seen Manchester Thunder, one of the teams announced that they're, they're furloughing their players, they're taking this 80% government uh, situation and using that for pay then topping up with the 20 percent too have you got any real fears about about clubs in the super league financially and, and whether they can or can't ride through this period I, I definitely have because i do know that the situations out there that every franchise is, have, have their own unique circumstances on how they pay their players um, and some people some of the franchises are not able to take the furlough there's other franchises as well who are also supplementing other, other sports and franchises. So, you know, the partnership with rugby, which one's going to take the priority? Where's the finances going to go? Um, so we're going to come out of this season thinking, are these franchises, are they going to fold? Are they, you know, are we going to support them? How are they going to get supported? And, you know, you talk about playing netball, but it's more than that. It's fan engagement. It's what you put around them Super League um, fixtures and around them Super League ambassadors of players that actually make the money and generate the revenue for the sport. And I think that is in itself is the most important thing at this at, in this conversation. It isn't just about playing one game for one hour on Saturday. It's the revenue that is actually put around that and the support and fan engagement from that. We talk about netball on the rise. So that means we don't see netball now on Sky Sports until next February, March. You know, where will Sky go then? They'll be looking for other sport, other opportunities. And, and are we going to miss out on that? And I think that is something, you know, with the Olympics being cancelled and the Euros, potentially the football season, you know, we have to capitalise on this now. And the only way we can do that is to actually have a day one and run this season from when it is actually safe for us to do so. Tracy, it's lovely seeing you. I'm glad we gave you, what, five, ten minutes off for this hour. We'll do it at the same time next week, shall we? Another yeah. hour off. I need a friend tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> I'm there. I'm there. Uh, yeah, maybe not with my netball skills. Uh, Tracy Neville, always a pleasure. All the love to you, Michael and Nev, too. Thank you. Tracy Neville joining me in a, a private chat. You weren't invited along to that one, Tamsin Greenway. Yeah, you got already. That. Yeah, yeah. Always had a gig on. You were right. You were busy. Uh, so she was talking about the fact then that she thinks the season should be played in its entirety. Do you back that? Yeah, I think we had a chat about this a few weeks ago, didn't we? And, and I was asked kind of what what the hopes would be for the Super League season. I said there's two ways. You've either got to play the whole thing out and have two rounds for everything, or you've got to do a brand new competition. You can't just mix and match. You can't say to teams now at this point, oh, we'll perhaps just do, you know, half the season, the results of the first four rounds start at count, because I, I just don't think that's fair. I don't think the way the games are played out and, and who's played each other, it doesn't work for me. So, yeah, I agree with, with Tracy in the fact that it'd be ideal if we can run the season out. However, you do have to be wary, you know, we're not a fully of professional operation across the whole board that has massive implications on clubs and although some clubs might benefit from that in terms of ticket revenue and season tickets there are also big implications for other clubs who have to hire their venues and um, pay players for longer points of the season you know some teams are already paying the players at the moment so um, and whether that clashes with the international so I think there's massive sticking points on this but if this doesn't go on for too long fingers crossed hopefully play it out in its entirety. If it doesn't, a shorter, sharper season, but we start again with sort of new rules, new regs to make sure we get something in before the summer would be great. And the other point she was making in relation to that was, as you said, that actually all the leagues have got to start talking together. So now oh. is a perfect opportunity to get that international netball calendar. In a world calendar, Cal Caroline, a world calendar, please. We've been asking for
for it. Maybe if Tracy never asks for it, we'll, we will get it. But a world calendar and a perfect opportunity. I've been harping on about it for years. Um, and it's great to have someone like Tracy backing it. You know, because reality is for the last few years, the English Super League has been clashing. Um, someone like Tracy benefited as a coach having those players going overseas. But we've got to look at a way of the calendars working together and giving players opportunity to either play in both or, or um, it just work for every single nation and not just the top ones. All right, use the hashtag off the court for your thoughts on that, Sue. Next up, we're going to hear from Rachel Dunn, geneticist Rachel Dunn. Easy for you to say, an England top shooter. She's uh, also the Super League's longest serving player. She's a bit of a legend. As we were all celebrating last Thursday, the great work that's being done. I say celebrating, but just celebrating these great, great carers that we've got. I stood out on my doorstep here, gave the clap as well. Yeah, we're all doing it. We're all doing it. Uh, cheering, whoops, all of the above. Rachel Dunn deserves those too. Working for the NHS, I'm, I'm proud. At St George's, they're currently looking at um, going through a temporary restructure to help deal with um, the coronavirus. And I work in um, genetics, so part of that will uh, remain as a um, consistent service. And the other half, they're potentially scaling down and we're just awaiting news on um, where staff might, might be redeployed. But I think in terms of staff and all my colleagues we're just um trying to help in whatever way we can um to try and support um our tr st george's trust at the moment and in the, in the bigger fight against them um, what's happening now as a, a netballer or any sports person out there uh it's the uncertainty at the moment because uh we've just done a big pre-season in netball and then we're just into the season and there's only so long you can maintain um uh the high intensity of being at your peak no one knows how long this is going to last for um if, if people's seasons will start again and, and that's the same across um, all sports and disciplines at the moment just the uncertainty so it's just trying to keep ticking over keep checking in with your teammates and just um, trying to react and um, deal with it when we come out the other side the brilliant rachel dunn i can say brilliant there's something i, I don't know if i can share this tamsin go on one of the first times we commentated on a game together you said Watch, right? There's a, this is a secret moment when Rachel puts her head under a towel. You know um, that Rachel's getting into that that thinking process, and maybe that's the time to have a word with her when she's not got the towel over her head. She's she's fine. And is it is as simple as reading Rachel like that? <laughs> yeah, when you've known her for years, we do have a thing now that she's not allowed to put the towel over her head in anywhere near me because it signals a very bad day at the office. Oh. Um, but, but yeah, we, I know her cues and everything so well, but for a shooter, how you regain your focus and how you operate out there, you know, I would want to do it, the pressure those, those people are under. And it's no, um, the reason she's probably working in the NHS is because she handles that pressure and she, um, is so brilliant in those kind of situations. So uh, we love Rachel Dunn. We do not love Rachel when she has a towel on her head. Uh, well, we're not about to put a towel over our heads. We are about to change into the same clothes as next week, as we link up as next week and as last week too. Always <laughs> the same clothes. It always works. It's getting to me, getting to me. Uh, this is the time of the week when we link up with My Netball Nation and the Netball Show and discuss the players of the season. We did the defensive end last week. It's time for the mid-quarters. <laughs> It's that time of the show where we put on the clothes we were wearing last week and join up with My Netball Nation and the Netball Show to reveal our mid-quarters of the season. Last week it was defenders, this week it's mid-quarters. So come in Sarah Bayman from My Netball Nation, how are you? I'm good, thank you. Uh, since we last spoke, what... <sighs> must seem like almost minutes ago. It, it does seem like no time at all. I'm glad that you've been able to set up the same setup for your camera. Mm, this same week. clothes and everything, yeah. <laughs> so let's start with your position then. Uh, once always our greatest ever centre and mid-quarter I'm going for. Uh, who Thanks. is your... It's all right. uh, yeah. Uh, who is your mid-quarter of the season and why? Um, I found this one was, was pretty tough and um, I've actually gone for Liana Liotta. Um, I think my natural instinct would always to be go for a defensive mid-quarter but I think in that Stars attack end, she's made such a huge difference. They had a really strong start to the season. Yes, they lost to Mavs. Um, they pushed Thunder all the way. And then you could feel that something was brewing and, and they got a win over Wasps. And for any teams out there wanting to know what setups to do on a team for your centre pass attack, watch whatever Stars do against them because Liana Leota dictates what's happening on that line. She runs the show. She's getting good ball into Georgia Rowe and she's made a, a heck of a difference to Stars' attack lineup. 
Tamsin Greenway, do you agree? I do indeed agree, actually, with Leona Leota. She was on one of my lists. Um, I like how Sarah got her, her mention of beating wasps, and that they did, that first game. You're welcome. Um, I would have I gone with Leona, but um, very closely for me was Adine Thomas. Um, and really interesting because you're going to see from some of these clips, like Adine's release points, her use of her body, the way she's feeding her vision in the circle is very similar to Leona's. I think the only difference at the minute, and Sarah touched on it, is that Leota is running the show. She is the playmaker in the attack end. However, looking at Adine and how she's coming on in that false lineup, um, you know, they are still three from three as well. They've had a brilliant start to the season. Um, and the way I saw her, how gutted she was when she got taken off the court, even against their winning Surrey Storm, she is going to be one of those playmakers. Uh, I really believe this season for her in the English League is going to do all wonders, not only for Pulse, but moving forward for the Jamaica front line as well, because they need a wing attack. Um, and I think she's got all the attributes to make a great one. Andy Lamb from the Netball Show also with us. Uh, was there kind of much gnashing of nails and maybe people throwing their Zoom meetings out the window when you were trying to find out who was your mid-quarter of the season between the team? On Andy? this one, yes, because not to mention the fact that Georgia Lee's wanted a fiver. If she'd said that she'd pay me a fiver if I mentioned her. So <laughs> I'd have to include Georgia Lee's in this list somewhere. But I've seen people like Emily Goldwyn from Storm pre-season and on the opening weekend as well. So she was close and deserves a mention in here as well. But I've actually gone for another Stars player, Mia Jones. The sheer fact that she, she's almost non-stop, you know what you're going to get for her anyway, but how she's already teaming up with Liana as well, as and when this league gets back up and running or moving forward, that's just going to be one of those things that is going to be there to see develop. Well, I don't know. I'm torn between you all. I've loved seeing, I don't know about you, Sarah, I've loved seeing Thomas and what she's, what she's brought to the league as well. Yeah, just I like think... hit it really quickly. She has, and I think it, it, I, actually I did toss up between Adine Thomas and, and Liana Leota because I've been really impressed with with what Thomas has brought to the league. It 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 made me question why we've not seen her more for Jamaica uh, up until this point. But I think also the energy that she brings to to Pulse is a is a massive thing, you know, just on and off the court, and you can see that team growing. So uh, yeah, I think um, she's definitely up there. And Tamsin, with, with Nia Jones, you've got someone that's kind of seems like she's on this one woman mission to, to really try and propel her team forward in whatever in, position uh, she's in. Nia Jones probably uh, just comes close, uh, just beats Sarah Bayman in the most physical wing defence I've ever played. <laughs> <laughs> and I definitely have the bruises to show for that. Um, yeah, look, Nia is a character. She's a character off the court. She's a character on the court. Um, I think Andy's right in sort of her summary. You know, she's probably one of those players that doesn't get get the mentions. She will leave everything out in the court, and I mean everything. Even from those clips, you see the sort of the battles she has with her players. But it does mean that when she does come hunting through that ball and she does get away with it, um, you know, she will take ball off it, and, and that's the winner. And, and sometimes those teams need those kind of players, and I think she fits right into that star's mindset. Well done, everyone. I approve of everything. Uh, you might hear my bin men in the background, uh, which is probably your cue to leave us. Uh, coming up next week, we will do our attacking players of the season. But Andy Lamb from the Netball Show, thank you. Listen to the podcast every week. When I'm thank not you. listening to, of course, my Netball Nation uh, with you, Sarah Bayman, and the team too. Thank you. And uh, Tamsin, you're not going anywhere. Coming up next, we'll go through your social media. Thank you to Sarah and to Andy. Hashtag off the court to argue to your heart's content about who you think should be mid-quarter of the season. Next week then, as I just said, in different clothes, we'll be talking about the attacking end. But we are going to focus on the mid-court then. And in particular, you want to talk about the centre pass, Tamsin Greenway. Yeah, well, I had quite a few questions on Twitter. I often put it out, ask what people want to know about off the court. And this week I said specifically the mid-court. So a uh, big question was about the centre pass and... Uh, whether two players should offer over the line and how you kind of get free over the line. And I picked out three clips actually from England playing New Zealand in the Nations Cup. They're really interesting. If you just focus on the wing attack and the goal, goal attack role and what they do over the line, all three are slightly different. So the first one is you play that through and you're looking at Nat Hazelwaite and Ellie Carbell on the line. You notice that Carbell doesn't offer at all. But interestingly as well, once the ball has landed with Hazelwaite, she doesn't then clear out the way. So it, um, 
means that Hastings weight has to play back, which is no real second phase. There's no option for Fisher to come out of the circle. Um, and it just kind of clogs up the space. You then start to look at the New Zealand centre pass, slightly different. So this time, you don't have both players coming over the line, but what you do have is the goal attack clearing out the way. It allows then Saunders, I think it is, at centre to come through and take, take that second phase. So she's created some, some space. Finally, the best clip is the England third centre pass, where both of them offer, it breaks that Kiwi um, structure out the front and it allows them to get great driving the ball down to the circle edge. There's pros and cons to both offering. It's all about the timing. You don't just want two players coming out wide, but if you can get a sort of one go, second go, third go, and you kind of get that working off each other, it can really break down a unit and can be really effective. So I like to have two offers. It's just how we work together with it and the timing of that. All right, level with me. Are cool. they the key players on court, your mid-quarters? Uh, your wing attack is your, is your key one in the attack end. And I'm not just, <laughs> I knew it, but I knew it. I knew you were setting me up for that. But honestly, they're the playmakers. Look at what we've just watched. Leona Liotta, I just talked about how Dean Thomas can grow into that role. That wing attack is crucial in terms of how they take the centre pass. You don't want to give that pressure to the goal attack. You want to make sure that wing attack has that role that can open up the space and it's all over it. You look at how Hayfield's weight handles that ball. She is completely playmaking that England attack end. Oh, so pretty. Oh, That's whatever. Pretty. Whatever. Yeah, let's have a look at some of your questions then. So as you rightly said, lots pointing about how to work in that mid-court. Natalie wants to know best tips and tricks to receive the centre pass at wing attack, all about the wing attack, when you're, you're tightly marked by the wing defence. But you kind of just covered that, right? Yeah, and it's all about the movement you do off the ball as well. A lot of the time you only focus on what's happening. When you are watching games, make sure you're watching players when they're off the ball, all the movement, that angles, the position, and they're doing on defence, because that is crucial if you want to be effective with getting over the line. Sally, also with that question then, a uh, great picture taken with, with you in there. Lovely, some of the, the images that we saw, particularly around the Netball World Cup. And this is some of the stuff we want to keep up as we keep rolling through too. So important that, that young players have someone to look up and to aspire to. Use the hashtag off the court. Uh, asking from under 13 daughter skills and drills for quick turning to look down the court and feed into the Dean, stepping around players. It is all about repetition. Perfect opportunity, as I keep saying, to do your movement, to practice this footwork, taking ball and making sure you're turning outwards. That's key. So many players are really comfortable turning inwards with the ball. Get turning outwards. It allows you to beat the defender. It allows you to make sure you're looking completely down the court and, and get that ball up so you're able to pass it around those defenders. Centre pass movement tactics, please. Uh, how to feed the circle with tall defenders inside, says Eve. And tactics on centre pass attacking-wise, as well from Hannah Carrot, uh, the brilliantly named Hannah Carrot as well, got in touch with us too. <laughs> Hannah, thank you. Use the hashtag off the court. Any more of those that you want to pick up on? No, I think a lot of that sense pass attacking wise goes into those three clips we showed. So look, look and look again, look at how they're prepping, what they're doing, how they're working together and how when both attack the line, it can be really effective. All right then, time for your drill. What are we looking at this week? So I'm picking up on some of the mid-court themes. Um, we've looked at those centre pass from an analysis point of view working together, but I want to look at hitting the edge because a lot of people have been talking about that. So it's going to be about how you come on and off and on and off and on and off again, Caroline Barker. You see, we're the hardest working players on the court. Yeah, whatever. Roll me <laughs> Honest. Okay, so this week we've had loads of questions about how to sit, hit the circle edge. Firstly, excuse the attire. I'm not used to all this outdoor netball, but um, I thought we'd be creative. So we've got top of the circle, be up here. This little middle section, this is where all attackers try and play their netball. They end up windscreen wiping across the court, not effective at all. Then I've got my glamorous assistant up here who's pretending to be my third line. And this is really key. So the first exercise we're gonna look at is how we open up this space. We're not gonna play in this middle area, but we want the most amount of space possible. So we're gonna drive down, hit the edge as we do that. We're gonna go and get a ball <laughs> into as much space as possible. So come down, Hit the edge, back up, dogs, we're right at this third line, we're in control of the game, we offload, we come right down, make sure we get right off oh. <laughs> that <laughs> circle second. edge. So that's what you're going to work on to start off with. Second one, you're going to use this area. Now the danger is you come in here, we try and get flat, it's impossible to hit that edge. So we're going to change direction earlier or change later. So this time we're going to high five, this is the third line, we're going to turn, hit the cone and then drive. Come back, get loads of space, turn, making sure we're nice and open, hit the cone, and then drive to the edge. Last one, come back, hit, gonna come through, bump, and then to the edge. 
finally you start to link all these together. So how you open up this space. So we might come and get a ball from the back up. Time volley. Offload. Go, but we can't get it. Come back out. Go back to the third line. We're opening up the space. And then bump. We hit that edge. Really important that you don't play in this middle area, but you go right up to that third line, right down to the edge, on and off, and a real sharp change when you want to hit the edge. Keep your drills, spills and thrills coming in. Is that another <laughs> t-shirt that we want to try and design? Maybe not, um, possibly not as well. Use the hashtag off the court if there's something you would like Tamsin to run you through. Shall we have a little look at what social media has been going on? Oh yes, it's keeping me sane. Right, I'm not sure if you've seen this, but the Netball Super League is up and running again, at least virtually. The alternative Super League is being run by Netball SL, at Netball SL. Vitality Netball Super League on social media. Teams are all going to compete against each other. Prizes for fans. And the first things first in the opening fixtures, Wasps against London Pulse. See all the fixtures on screen. Each team has 30 seconds to get as many tea bags into a mug from a set distance as possible. Up for that, Townsend Greenway? I'm keen. This is right up my alley, this. <laughs> uh, yeah, the problem is, which team do you play for? Maybe Wasps, Bath. Who would like to claim Townsend Greenway? Uh, get your orders in now. We talked about players and what they're doing to keep fit. Kyra Jones, talk me through, tactically analyse the ability of Kyra Jones. Focus on the fact she's got a mirrored garage here, Tamsin. <laughs> I'm going to ignore that. But I've talked about these footwork drills. So important. Just look how quick her feet are going through there. So if you haven't got ladders, you haven't got cones, get creative. You can use anything. I was using animals and stuffed toys the other day. Um, the skipping rope, easy things to do. Things with a med ball. Um, you know, I've been up and down with Casey Jacks here and there, using him as a weight. So... Just be as creative as possible, but get doing those footwork, those movement drills, and those short, sharp, high-intensity activities. Get creative. How's about this for creative? Oh, this is your this favourite. Barker, oh, this had me and you written all over it. Look at that. Ow! I can't do that. <laughs> How many weeks do you want me put out for? This is Lee Thomas, a uh, star of the Netball Super League since uh, just her very early days on court this season and she's challenged you to a dance off. You, me, next week, flash dance? Yeah, I think that one we're just shooting straight past. Yeah, that's not going to happen. Uh, we are going to link up internationally. Now, Sue Gordian, known as the voice of Netball, some might have a go at her about that. Let's try when we get her on. Has been doing netball lookalikes and some of these are very special, very special. Even Chelsea Pittman features in there yet to see your one Townsend who would it be I don't know I'm kind of glad we're not in there to be fair with some of the ones that have come out of the bag on this it uh, can be very very drama. interesting that one of normal was was classic but yeah I'm, I'm kind of glad we're keeping out of that one uh, Sue Gordian too and you can join her Gordy's gas bags every week she's talking to various people from the netball world too so check out Sue Gordian on Facebook that's almost it from us this week. What have you got planned for the next couple of days? Oh, let me think. Um, more of the same. More Indoors, the same. outdoors, bit of netball drills. Mm, about it. You? Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm going to be practising Dean's dance. That's all I'll be doing. If I can get my uh, leg up. Around. Oh, I can't even get it up in front of the screen here. So that's not going to happen. Although I do have a netball. Yeah, oh, okay. yeah, don't know what yeah. to do with it. So um, maybe I'll just play with myself and the netball <laughs> up against the wall. That's what's going to happen. Uh, all comments, <laughs> welcome. Hashtag off the court. Should we leave it there? I think we should. Thank you for watching. Bye. Sky Sports. Feel it all.